Hello, welcome to Spitfire Mods. Today we're going to be covering the use of the step up, uh, step up and down transformer when using a ACH IR3. Um, this unit, uh, unit like this, would also be used for an IR6000, uh, the new Scottle IR6500 or um, or IR6000, and the HR6000. Any unit that is a 220 volt unit. Now, one thing we wanted to cover, and a lot of customers ask this, is uh, can they just run a 220 outlet to the wall and run their machine on US 220 power? And some people believe that US 220 power is the same power requirements as the 220 which is required for European power. And it's not the same, it's actually um, 220 US power is two phase 220, which means it's two waveforms of 115 which double up to create the 220. Uh, so it's two phases, which are the um, the waveforms you would see if you if you Google it, you'll see what I mean. But um, what we're here to talk about is the fact that the 220 US is not the same as the European uh, power. 220 US is two phases, where European is single phase. Uh, so just like your wall out with 115 in the United States is just one waveform of 115 alternating current, so you have a positive side and a negative side. 115 volts. Um, the European power is the same thing, but it goes to 220, so it's a much stronger voltage, which is going to put out a higher heat. The resistance of these plates are set to 220, and what what will happen if you plug the unit into a 115 unit at at your at your home or office? What's going to happen is your unit will run at about half the heat output that it normally can run at. So you might find your unit when you first plug it in, you might find it to be sluggish and not getting up to the temperature. Or you're running a profile and it never gets there. And that's what it'll do when you run it. Sometimes these panels will just sit there and blink. Um, typically, if you have a PC410 unit, one of the panels will sit there and flash uh, because it's not able to get enough voltage. And then the other unit will actually work. And that's because um, some of these panels will actually work on 110 and 220, and some won't. So you might have a panel not working. Uh, your may unit may not power up at all. Or um, it won't work correctly. It won't get hot enough. So that's the problem you have if you plug it into 115. If you plug it into 220 US, you might actually create more heat, but you're not quite getting the profile to run the way it's supposed to, and that's because the 220 uh, two phase for some units it will actually make the unit work, um, but it won't actually get you uh, the profile the way the way you would need it to be, and it may not just be hot and ramping fast enough. So it may work for your unit, but may not work quite correctly. It could be very hazardous because these unit, European units are engineered to have one hot leg, one ground leg, or neutral leg, and then a ground. Um, real, really, they don't use a ground over there. It's the neutral and ground are the same. So you have a hot and a neutral um, ground together. So um, you're going to have a unit that, if you put the power in there, you could have a hot shell or you could have a short um, as well. So running 220 US on any European 220 unit, um, which covers all the Chinese units that are 220, are made for single phase 220. So you don't want to run 220 US, you're going to want to use a transformer. Um, the transformer will plug into the US 115, and typically on the back of your transformer, we're going to go ahead and shut this guy off here, but typically on the back of your transformer, you're going to see a switch. When you get your transformer um, for this, you're going to see a, a, a connection there that says, what's your input voltage? Now, most people think when they get their transformer that you it's, it's you want to get 220, so you're going to take that plug and put it on 220. But this is actually the input, so it's asking, what what are you plugging into? So rather than what your output would be, which is you know what most people logically think that is, it's what's your input. So you're going to set that to 110. There may just be a, a dummy switch which goes, which goes left and right, um, like this unit here. You may get a unit that, um, you know, a, a transformer like this where it's going to have a plug, you're going to need a US, a US converter, and then um, it's going to have a switch like this which which has 220 on it. Now, when these are where people really make a mistake. They get a unit like this where it just has a switch that says 220 or 110. It doesn't say anything about what that's for. Uh, it actually says select a voltage before using. Now, I would even think, and, and anybody would think, well, select voltage before using, well, I want 220, so I'm going to put it on 220, but this is the voltage in, so putting on 220 actually steps the voltage down another half, so we end up with 60 volts rather than, one than 110, rather, uh, rather than 220, so we're stepping down. 
So you actually want that on 110, and it's saying select a voltage. We're going to give it 110, and then um, and here it does say input 220 or 110. A lot of the units don't actually have that on it though, and and they just have that little small switch on there. So that needs to be set to 110 typically, and uh, and check the manual or, or contact the manufacturer that you bought it from. But typically, every unit I've ever seen is is selected for the input voltage, and then your output will be you know and here it says output 110 or 220 it will be 220 now these are built to go both ways so if you go over in Europe and you need 110 you can go over there and get 110 single phase just like here you can get 220 single phase so it works in both locations so this is the end of our, our transformer um, video but basically what we covered is the fact that you would be giving your transformer 110 and then your transformer is going to create 220 for your unit and then your unit is going to plug into that and that's how you would run those. Some have two outputs, they'll have a 110 and a 220 output so we're going to run, run it off our 220 output and then that will give us enough juice. Now this thing has cooling fans in here when, when this is switched to 110 the cooling fan barely spins so you barely get any flow. Right now we're getting a nice heavy flow cooling the unit down and that's what we were, were, were looking for. Um, also at 110 we couldn't get the chip hot enough but at 220 we were easily able to remove the chip with no pad loss at all actually it was a very good removal so um, this is an older unit it's an IR3 manual left and right um, upper and lower controls and then that's the end of our um, transformer video uh, stay tuned we're going to go over this unit and its usage uh, next and uh, thanks for watching